There, there are two stories. One, Newtonian. I will not insist on. Because the dark bodies, it's a cousin of black holes. And it was invented by someone you don't know, John Mitchell. Laplace, after that, took the ID and named dark bodies. And physically, it's quite the same. Quite. Just a cousin. Okay? But there are interesting things in this Newtonian story. I will not insist on that. The second one is the history of general relativity. Dark bodies were thought at the end of the 8th century, but general relativity took 50 years and some more to accept and to think to this concept. And this is what I will tell you why relativists had so many problems with black holes. Okay, you see, there are many points I will go through. Whole new. What I want is to insist on the light code. Just uh, one point. You know, it's not Riemannian general relativity. It's neo Riemannian, and it's quite different because the kissing nature is not positive. It's, you know, it's minus the cone. And only one mathematician did something before Einstein. It was Minkowski. But mathematicians who were Riemannian didn't thought to that. And so he had to do all the, the with uh, his uh, colleague Grossman, he had to do all the job. And the relativists too. And they were mathematicians, etc. And I read in a book in mathematics by Berger that all the work has been done up to the 80s by relativists. And so it was a different, diff because it, it's very difficult, the Riemannian geometry and the what I call neo-Riemannian geometry with a minus in the signature, okay? And so it was not so simple to do. The equations, everyone knows, okay. And so from 1915 up to the 70s, quasi, it was what I called the low watermark of general relativity. The low watermark is a desert of relativity because some, well, we will see this very uh, quickly. I will remember, you know, Max Born. I remember he wrote, it was Bernd's uh, colloquium in 55, and Einstein died. He was his best friend. I remember that on my honeymoon in 1913, I had in my luggage some reprints of Einstein's paper, which had absorbed my attention for hours, much to the annoyance of my brain. Right. This paper seemed to me fascinating, but difficult and almost frightening. When I met Einstein in Berlin in 1915, the theory was much improved and crowned by the explanation of the anomaly of the perineum of Mercury, Etc. I learned it not only from the publication, but with numerous discussions with Einstein, which had the effect that I decided never to attempt any work in the field. You understand that? Okay, bon. The foundation of general relativity appeared to me then, and still does, the greatest feat of human thinking about nature, the most amazing combination of philosophical penetration, physical intuition, and mathematical skin. But its connection with experience were slender, small. Okay. It appealed to me as a great piece of work of art to be enjoyed and admired from a distance. He said everything for the white, for this uh, time, you know, the low watermark, you know. Bon. And there are, uh, you know, there were free tests, everyone knows that, up to the 60s, you know. Mercury's perihelium, and it was the only test that resisted up to the end of the 50s. The deflection of light in 1915, it was important because, you know, they thought that, okay, 
but it was not so precise. And at the end of the 20s, an expedition by Freundlich at Sumatra showed, it's a, all of a discussion, I have no time, it's just you know, the remark, that it was not so clear. And even Eddington, who was the leader of uh, 1919, said, wow, it's not so clear. You know, and it was not clear, and in 55 at the Bern Congress, the same Congress were born, spoke, as you heard, uh, it, it was not clear. It's clear, you know, it's, uh, it was Trumpler who made the point about uh, all this free test, and only, you know, the first test was, and it was a test that was really important for general relativity because Newton, in Newton's theory, it was not possible to, to, to understand that. Okay, the gravitational shift of rays, it was found on Drebka, an experiment in 1959. And this was the first time of a renaissance of general relativity. You know, first moment. Okay, this is a curve I have done, you know. The number of publications in general relativity. Alors, you see, here, it's 1919, you know, the eclipse. And then, general relativity was high. High, it's 2.5%. It's 40 publications a year, something like that. And after that, just before the war, it's four, 10 publications, no more, okay? And uh, you see two uh, small peaks, cosmology, uh, of uh, the publication in uh, physical abstract. I, I did that at end, but physical abstract from all the papers, the, in, all the papers in physics. Uh, well, 2.5, okay? Uh, but uh, you, you uh, uh, yeah, from 1915 here to the 50s. You will have the next at the end of the session, okay? Because now we work with sociologists about that. It's interesting. Okay, now let's come to the early interpretation of the Schwarzschild solution. Bon, black hole, fundamental questions, you know that. But why? For two reasons. Because it's light and because the mass can be as high as you want. And, you know, the potential is in one over R and so M over R could be very important. It's a limit of general relativity in some way. Okay. Bon, I spoke of dark bodies. I will not... Bon, you see, Laplace, John Mitchell, I told you, it's well known. This is, you know, it, it, the, the problem of the collapse was not a problem in, in the Newton theory, actually. You know, bon, it was no Schwarzschild singularity. It was just the central singularity. And so, why relativists didn't compare at the time, you know, Mitchell's and uh, Laplace work was only understood by Eddington in the 20s, I think. Bon. But let us come to Schwarzschild, the solution, Schwarzschild solution. As you know, it's a singularity in 2M over R, uh, in 2M, etc. And uh, what I want to point out is that at the time from the beginning, up to the 60s, the relativists were, you know, only thinking in this square, the line element. And it was not that clear that the problem was coordinates. Now we know there are good coordinates and bad coordinates. Why? It's not that clear, it's not that simple. And in Newton's theory, any coordinate is okay. You can take any coordinate and it works. But there, you know, and at the time, no one, not no one, I will come back afterwards to the people that had a thought and were not, bon, read, but this is another point, okay? So, so, so they will work with different coordinates and so on without any reason. And so, no, excuse me. You know, 
The, the problem was, of course, not the singularity in R equals zero, but the singularity at the Schwarzschild radius. The name was Schwarzschild singularity, and I will use it because it was used at the time. Bon, so as you, you know, eh? etc. Okay, bon. This too, you know that. Bon. In 1922, I am not, there are so many papers I read, I worked on, but I have no time to tell you the details. You can read that in the book I wrote on in papers, you know. Einstein was invited in Paris, and before, bon, Schwarzschild's solution was, I forgot to tell you, it, it was published in 1916. Uh, the Schwarzschild one uh, on the front, and he died at the same time in May, you know. And Einstein was very glad to have an exact and general solution. This is important. The general solutions, the exact solutions, were the field where people could work on a, a, a mod, not a mod, and some, uh, something which is an approximation, but just a general solution, and what a general solution? It was, you know, Newton's fall, you know, the, the, uh, the same as the law in one over R2, okay? And so it was really important to work on that, and there are plenty of papers concerning that at the time. But everyone will, or quasi everyone, will come back after that to the scientists with some high, different idea. They thought that it was a singularity, and Einstein thought the same way up to his death, I would say, at 2 m. It was the Schwarzschild singularity, and it was impenetrable, okay? Impenetrable, I will explain you why, enfin, why they thought like that. So in 1922, Einstein was in Paris at the Collège de France, and he gave uh, many spoke with uh, Bergson and so on. But there was a mathematician, and uh, I have to say that the physicists in Paris were not very nice with Einstein. They didn't want to invite him, for example, at the academy and things like that. They were very, you know, distant. Bon, it was a war, but it was also this uh, theory that was impossible to understand. Uh, it's, I have all of uh, quotations like that, but I will not speak of that today. And so it was Adamar, a very important professor of mathematics, that remarked the singularity, and Einstein named that Adamar catastrophe, you know, the like catastrophe of Adamar. And uh, he, he was coming, he was going to his hotel. He made a calculation that had been done before by Schwarzschild. And, well, it's not very complicated. You know, it's an interior solution by Schwarzschild. Maybe you know it was static. And the pressure, you know, will be infi inf infinite before the. Uh, uh, before reaching the uh, radius, the Schwarzschild radius. So it was inaccessible. And so the problem was, but was uh, solved. But it was a static solution. And in, in the Schwarzschild interior solution, uh, the, I think that the density is constant and uh, the pressure uh, depends on air. Okay, so, well, it's just, a point, Adamar. So it was impossible to collapse, you know, but the world was not used. After that, uh, I have been very interested in trajectories. But why? Because there are plenty, I think hundreds, of papers on trajectories of the Schwarzschild uh, solution. And uh, I have to tell you that I made the calculations because you have to go in, there are always different coordinates, different notations, and you have to, to see. And I, I found something that I like very much, I will show you. But first, Lauer, you know, two books, 
one on special relativity, another in 21 on general relativity. This is what, I think you, you understood, every trajectories, but he, he didn't get the exact uh, solution of the trajectories, but it's correct. It's correct, but A, it's, you, you see, impenetrable. Okay? I have ni nothing to tell you. No, and this is not only law. This is what people thought. It's what I uh, call a doxa. I will go on. Excuse me? This is the picture Shep is hoping to verify. Uh, let, let's come. That's the point I want to raise because Le Gens made a very nice thesis. This is what I think uh, the, the, uh, working uh, with. Um, uh, well, I don't remember, but well, no, no problem. His he, work on the Schwarzschild and the uh, theory is free, really important uh, thesis of uh, 300 pages, something like that. And everything is done. He, he, he get with Weierstrass uh, uh, solutions and. Uh, uh, everything, the exact solutions of any trajectories. Very nice. Look at. But it's something worse. It's when he's doing with phi, you see, something like that. An equation. I read the equation and I saw that the equation was clear. It was going on, of course. He didn't see it. He didn't see it. It was a doxa. You cannot see it if you, your father told you it's not. So it was impenetrable. I don't see in the equation a very simple equation. It was really evident. He didn't see it. Okay, and it's all the way like that. Another, it was in '48, an astrophysicist. He was the only one to get, you know, the radial. When you want to see something, you get, it's the same equation as Newton's. But, you know, the, the time, the absolute time of, uh, of uh, Newton, you have to replace it by the proper time. And the proper time, you know, it's really the important thing. I understood that not at the beginning of my studies because in Paris, nobody, um, you know, uh, uh, Five minutes already, push. Okay, oof. Well, you, you will not get uh, all the story. Okay, well, I go on. Robert Son, the cosmologist, you know. He was not the only one to say, there are no objects so dense that you can, etc. cetera. Bon, cosmology, this is really important. You know, bon, let's, let's, the, the, problem of Einstein on regularity. Einstein was good and was, didn't do what he thought. Bon, I will give an example of the same. The, on, the, the first, to see that the Schwarzschild singularity was not singular, to make a demonstration was Lemaitre, you know, in 1933. But, you know, it was written in French in an obscure journal and so it was nobody read that. But he came to the States and he saw many people, Tolman and others, Robertson. And then uh, he, he, he gave his equation because it's an equation where it's no singularity. It, it will be quoted by Kruskal in uh, 55, by Singe in 50. I will not have time to, to, to tell you about that. But without Le Maitre equation that shows up that there are no singularity, Oppenheimer would not have done his work. And he get it through Tolman, who knew it from Le Maitre, and he, did, no, no, he doesn't quote at Le Maitre, but at Tolman. Okay? But Tolman quote at Le Maitre. But it's Le Maitre. And so Le Maitre is as important as Oppenheimer, I would say. Maybe more. Bon, 
Let's come to Robertson. Robertson was a cosmologist, and cosmology was very important because you can understand better. C'est fini, là? <laughs> bon, non, quand même, it's very important. He, he, he did better than, uh, than uh, Oppenheimer, but it was not published. It was a lecture, and it was published by Newman after his death. And he's going not only on the horizon, what you call the horizon, but in, with, in, a, uh, in, a, uh, it, in a small uh, proper time, okay? And he did that. And so it's more important to see that, the trajectories. Bon, but he has not, you know, all what you do. It's another way, outgoing and ingoing, incoming uh, trajectories. Here, uh, zut. Here you have, you know, the Schwarzschild radius, you know, and you have, uh, bon, it's the beginning, you know, of Kruskal uh, uh, expre expression. You see, in a finite proper time, up to R equal zero. Bon, you see? Okay. And Einstein was near, just two minutes. Einstein was near, he was in, um, uh, at Princeton. His, his bureau was near to the bureau of Robertson. And Robertson came and <laughs> tell him something like that. And I, you know, say this, uh, comes from Bergman. I, I saw Bergman because he came to our conferences and he told me that, he wrote me that, okay? And Einstein and uh, Tolman couldn't accept this idea, you know? We thought this was important but puzzling, okay? He was very nice, uh, he, he knew Bergman that, wow, he was not the only one. And Einstein in 1939, the same year after that I will stop, the same year as uh, uh, Oppenheimer, he wrote the worst paper of his life, I would say. Why? Because he wanted, he wanted to show that it was impossible to enter in the singularity. And what he, he was taking as hypothesis, circular. You know that circular, it's troisième. You have no circular, so it was done. But he has all, <laughs> and after that, of course, he cannot go in because there are no circular. Everyone knew that at the time. And so, you know, the conclusion is in the hypothesis. Really, Einstein was not a genius everywhere. Okay, but it's good for us. <laughs> <laughs> but he, <laughs> bon. You know, and so, etc. Bon, after that, you have Singe in 1950, and he will be quoted. See that? See, think like that. It's really near to what you know and what is there. You have Finkelstein interpretation, not Eddington. Huh? It's Finkelstein. It's the same, but well, there are so many. You have that. This is the Cruz Casiqueres, Schwarzschild by Robertson. And this, you know, and this, you know. And uh, okay, all of that, I will, and that, the publications now, you know, but not up to 1950, but to the, the uh, 70 and the 80s, okay? It's not finished. We are working on that. Okay, well, bon, Einstein, not his best job, <laughs> clear, an opportunist, but this is my conclusion. He, he, he thought that general relativity was just an alt, you know, and he wanted, you know, from the 20s, he worked <coughs> on United uh, Theories. Okay, thank you for your attention. I actually just had a clarification question. Um, you, at, you, you said that Oppenheimer pulled on Lemaitre's work are you saying that Oppenheimer actually spoke with Lemaitre about? about? No, you speak too quick for me. Sorry. <laughs> uh, did Oppenheimer talk to Lemaitre? 
or you no, think... No, he talked to, I think that he talked to, to uh, Tolman, and Tolman to, bon, this is compl not completely clear. But in any case, he got it through Tolman, and Tolman from Le Maître. Okay. This is absolutely clear. And without that, he couldn't do this famous paper. Yeah. And nobody told you that. Yes, sir. Uh, Einstein did talk with Le Maître. Oh, he yes. Oh, no, it's what uh, Bergman said. No, in that way. And he didn't like Le Maître. He didn't like Le Maître. It was clear, you know. <laughs> the constant, the lambda constant, it was a problem. And Le Maître was too much a physicist. Einstein, too much a mathematician in some way. Enfin, bon, it's much to, to say. But uh, he didn't like him. And I think he was like that. He has Heidi's, you know, you have Heidi's, all of you. You see De Gens, huh? the paper by De Gens, the equation. You don't see what you are doing. We are all like that from time to time. Okay, uh, with that, I think we need to move on. Uh, in, let's, uh, yeah.